In this video, we're covering PNP Modern Search handlebar templates. We're customizing the handlebar template to improve the output, add functionality, and make this thing look amazing. And if you thought handlebar templates were just too complex to bother with, trust me, you can do this. Let me walk you through the process, and before you know it, you'll be creating custom layouts on all of your solutions. Last time we met, we set up the PNP search filters and the search verticals, got them all working with our search results so that we could filter by different means. Now we're going to turn our attention to the PNP search results web part itself and start making this template look better. We're going to do this in stages because one of the changes we make is going to convert this from a standard out of the box people layout to a completely custom template, removing the options in other places. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add the department into this people card so that we can see what department each person is in. Now to do that, first I'm going to double check in the search admin center to make sure I know which field I need to grab. It's going to be people call a department, which is mapped over to a field called department. Check your tenant, but it's probably going to be the same thing. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to go to layout slots and we're going to make sure that we add a slot for this because department is not automatically pulled in. Okay, so now we've got department mapped as a layout slot and we can pick that in our template. Next, we're gonna go into the people layout fields. And we're gonna put this into the tertiary text where currently our email address is. I'm just gonna grab the username, handlebar expression so I can just replace it here and then just change user display name to department. And that should get our department displaying. There we go. So now that we've got rid of email, we need a way for users to contact these people. That's when we're gonna use the next line, the fourth line. Now the fourth line doesn't even show on this layout unless you're in extra large. So here you can see that it's already mapped to the phone number. First, let's get rid of the phone number and start putting in more useful things. So we'll start by adding the email address back in, but we'll do it on this fourth line, the optional text line. So we'll put a check in handlebars expression so we can put in some handlebar markup and we'll add in a hyperlink so that someone can send an email. And I think that will do it. Let's save and take a look. Okay, so now we've got the email address back in there on the fourth line, but we wanna make this a little bit better. So let's change the text that's showing to something that's frankly a bit cooler. So let's go back into the editor. And the text is gonna be this last part of the HTML if you're not familiar with it. And we can replace all of that with an icon reference, which is gonna be this. Now this is referencing a Fluent UI icon, and to be able to display this, we're using one of the built-in helpers for PNP Modern Search, which is PNP Icon. So this will let us display a Fluent UI icon. So let's hit save here and see how it looks. So now we've got an envelope icon down here. This is already looking better than just that plain hyperlinked email address that used to be here. But we wanna do more with this. Uh, email address is great, but how about a link to call somebody? How about a link to send them a Teams message? I think those would be really cool to be on here too. So let's add those. So we're gonna go back into the people fields and we'll edit this and we'll start adding our next hyperlink uh, at the beginning of this. So next we'll do a Teams message. So let's start adding that. Give myself some room. And now there's a special hyperlink you can use to tell teams you wanna send a message to them. And this is how it begins right here. So if you start a message with this and then you have the email address come right afterwards. So let's add in the email address. That should be the hyperlink we need to send a Teams message. And for the icon for this, we'll use another one of those icons from Fluent UI which is a free library, by the way. And for this icon, we'll use the message icon. 
Let's save this and see how it looks. All right, that is showing up. They are stacked on top of each other, but we will get some CSS styling in here when we're done, and I'll show you that. For the third action for these people, let's add a phone so that someone can click on it and initiate a Teams call. So let's go back in here and add that. And for Teams calling, what you can do is do a call to action instead of the TEL, which is more the old school method that you may have seen before. The call to will let you use Teams. So that's that's something that only Teams will pick up. I think Skype does as well, but we'll do the call to and we'll pass in the email address. And for this icon, we'll use the phone icon. So all three of those are in here. Let's see how it looks. And we've got all three. So we've got all three icons, but they're not looking that great. We need a little CSS styling. And if you haven't found a CSS option inside PNP search results, that's because there's not one. Here's how we can add some CSS to this though. We can go right into the template and you even already see a style tag in here. We can just add some styles in here to make this icon look better. Easy enough, right? Well, here's the catch. Right now, it shows that we're using a people layout. And that gives us this really handy option to manage the fields that are showing up. As soon as we edit this results template, it's going to change it to a custom layout. What a custom layout means is we're no longer going to have this button. So we want to make sure we have all the fields that we want added before we make that switch. Now we'll still be able to add stuff and change things around. We just won't have this button here to help us. So let's go and add in our styling and you'll see what that process looks like. So I've already worked out these style rules in my browser. If you need to work out something, you just open up developer tools and start playing around with the CSS to figure out what classes you need and go from there. But let's see how this looks. That looks much, much better. We increased the size, added some spacing, made sure that they're all on one line. This is looking sharp. Let's publish this and see how it works. All right, so the calling works. And the Teams message works, although it did just take us out of the SharePoint page. So we can change that with a little tweak. Let's go back into SharePoint. And you notice, like I said, it switches over to custom and we don't have a lot of those options that we had down below. And if you check the results template, we don't have those four custom fields that we've added. So where are they? Well, they're actually over here on this fourth page. If you remember in the previous video, I said that this screen is gonna be very handy. This is one of those times. So if we scroll down and they don't make it easy because we can't really enlarge this screen, but you will see right here near the top, here are those fields. So what we need to do is change the messaging link. There it is. And we need to make sure it opens up in a new window. So what we need to add to this is target equals blank. This will cause that hyperlink to open up in a new tab, which means we're not kicking the user off of the site they were previously on. But now there's one thing to notice. If you look over here, there's a backslash in front of these quotes. So that means that these quotes are escaped in this window. So we're gonna need to go back to here and make sure we escape those quotes as well. Otherwise, when we hit apply, it's not gonna close this window. All right, so those changes are saved. And let's try it out. Here's the new tab, and there's our instant message window. So that's working great too. And lastly, there's the email link. So let's try that out and see if it works. And there it is, it's already addressed to Patty. So these three links are all finished. Also notice that we went from having one user spanning the entire width of the display to now it's two columns. And that was just done with CSS. Now, if we even look at this in a wider column, It works there as well. So you have a lot of options here for how you want to style this thing and what you want to do with it, making it completely unique and how your users would best want to see that information.
PNB Modern Search is definitely a very cool set of web parts. I highly recommend you start using it if you haven't already because it's going to transform your solutions from looking like basic out of the box SharePoint to truly custom solutions. If you're like me, you're always trying to learn new tricks, new tips to level up your SharePoint game. If that sounds like you, then check out this video to continue your SharePoint knowledge journey. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this.